everyone, it's Abigail here. Welcome to the Swiss Home Park Primitive Methodist Church and the online service. We're praying for you and we hope you enjoy the service. Okay, Psalm 67, it's on page uh, 894 in your pew Bibles. Um, to the chief musician on the stringed instruments, a psalm a song. God be merciful to us and bless us and cause his face to shine upon us that your that you may be known on earth, your salvation among all nations. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. O let the nations be glad and sing for joy. For you shall judge the people righteously and govern the nations on earth. Let the people praise you, O God. Let all the people praise you. Then the earth shall yield your increase. God, our own God, shall bless us. God shall bless us, and all the ends of the earth shall fear him. Thank you, Marcia, for reading. And I'm going to ask that you would join me as we pray. Gracious Father, help us today by faith as we pray and ask for your word to have its way in our heart. Be exalted and honored. And we ask all this in the matchless, mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The 67th Psalm begins with an amazing request. And the request is simple when it simply says, God, be merciful to us and bless us and, and cause your face to shine upon us. Selah, think about this. God bless us and may your favor rest upon us. This morning as we celebrate the 4th of July weekend, I know this is July 5th, but we think about this whole concept of America. We think about this whole understanding of Independence Day and we know the fact that it was founded for this one specific purpose because we know that God created human beings to be free and we find in many cases how through the scripture the word declares for us to walk in that freedom and walk in that liberty and walk in that understanding because of God and what he's given us God initially gave man freedom in the garden. And what did man do? They made some bad choices. But men have always desired to be free. We know the Declaration of Independence state that, that people are what? Endowed by their creator with certain what? Unalienable rights. rights. And that among these are what? Life, liberty, and the pursuit of of happiness. Friends, this is America. And so the, the psalmist here in the 67th Psalm prays, God, would you bring a blessing upon us and, and cause your face to shine upon us? Wasn't that an underlying root of where America came from? A desire for people to know the favor and blessings and promise and presence and power of Almighty God in their lives. And Bill alluded to this earlier, that the original signers were willing to give it all. And I want to read to you this inscription that simply says, maybe in a more expanded way, the message that Bill just shared. By signing the Declaration of Independence, the 56 Americans pledged their lives, their fortunes, and their sacred honor. It was no idle pledge. Nine signers died of wounds during the Revolutionary War. Five were captured or imprisoned. Wives and children were killed, jailed, mistreated, and left penniless. Twelve signers' homes were burned to the ground. Seventeen lost everything they owned. No signer defected. Their honor, like their nation, remained intact. Think about that. 
wasn't easy. And it just didn't happen overnight. And this understanding of this great land by no means was something that just fell off the truck. But the vision and the understanding that God has created us in this understanding and in this way to pursue life and liberty and understand what it means to be happy in a Judeo-Christian foundation and in the presence of Almighty God that only He can provide for our lives. And so this weekend we celebrate this great nation. Is it perfect? No. But boy, can you think of any place else in the world where you would rather be today? And when we think today of what this psalm is, it, it, it's a prayer and it's a cry for God to, to rain your presence and your power upon us. Oh yes, it would be for, for the nation, we think, uh, of Israel. But I believe it, it, it's a prayer for us today as well. And when we think of the prayer, first of all, for a blessing. How many times have you prayed, God, bless me? God, I need a blessing today. What are you asking God to do? We just sang, America, America, God shed his grace on thee and crowned thy good with brotherhood from sea to shining sea. Krista came up and had us sing the song, what, God? Bless America. What are, what are we asking? When we ask for a blessing, when someone sneezes, what do you say? Do it again? <laughs> well, what are you saying to them? But what's it mean? The psalmist says, be merciful unto us and bless us. God, we want to understand more than ever what it means to have your presence and to have that power to give us that peace in our life, to know undoubtedly that you are with us. We desire nothing more than for your mercy. How many people today are troubled? How many people today are upset and are uncertain because of things that are going on in the heart? Think about it. Mercy. God, we know that our conduct, we know our action is fully deserving of your wrath. We know the grace of God gives us the things that we don't deserve. And the mercy of God keeps us from getting the things what? We do. And so today, when we think of our lives, who wouldn't say, yeah, God, I need a blessing. God, I... I want you to understand more than ever your mercy. Because I've done some things in my life that are just ripping me to shreds. And I don't have an answer. I'd sure love to know that as you look down on me, when you see me, I bring a smile to your face. Did you ever hear years back someone came up with this concept? You think God has your picture on his refrigerator? <laughs> the kids just cleared off our refrigerator because we had to switch some things around. I think how many inches deep was the pictures? We had made pictures back to kindergarten, I think maybe of Emily. And uh, who knows? Okay. I mean, we had everybody's picture on there. We had this one couple, they had saved the date like four times, okay? And then and, and it was, uh, when was it? And then they finally, we went down to that wedding at the bottom, I think. Remember that one? But anyway, Krista. But it's all these things that are on the refrigerator because it, it, they're special and they're dear and they're near to us. And so the prayer this morning, as we're asking God to have mercy and, and to bless us, the, the prayer now isn't just for our home, but who is it for? It's our nation. It's our nation. And, and we're asking for, for, for God to look with favor upon us. My mother used to give the look. You know the look that only a mom can give? Because she didn't have the ability physically to level us 
but she could give you the look, and that's all it took for me. And my heart was broke. I want God to be able to look upon me. And I want to know and understand His presence. Because here's what's happening. Look in verse 2. That thy way may be known upon the earth. I'm not just being greedy for the blessing. I'm not just being greedy for the mercy. I'm not just being selfish for me, 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 me. But for what that brings and what that does. An individual told me recently, I need to go to church. I need to come and bring my family. Because I see what it does and what it produces. And, and I just need to do it. And what do you say to a person like that except... Right? What was the like? Just do it. You know what you need to do. But now the prayer is that it wouldn't be just for me, but it would be for the, the whole world. And then this specific prayer that God's way would be known. What do people really know today? Do we, do I really fully understand Genesis through Revelation? I'm trying. Do I fully understand the presence and power of the Holy Spirit at work in the hearts and lives of people today? I'm trying. Do I fully understand the role and work of the church and the intricacy of the body and the importance of each person in that body to make it strong and well? I'm trying. You can name all these areas of life as a dad, as a mom, as a husband, as a wife, as a worker, as an employee, as a student, whoever, however you carry yourself in life. Do I understand my role and how that role is to be in obedience and to be at the wheel of Almighty God? Whatever he wants. And the prayer of the psalmist is not just for the blessing, not just for the mercy, but for this land and for the world to know and understand the way of God. Wow. How passionate were our founders in this concept? Things weren't going well in the colony world, right? And we think it's time because of what we think and what we know and what we understand of God and his desire for our hearts to pursue these things. We're going to break out and we're going to do this thing and we're going to call it America. And here we are today. And the way of the Lord and the way of his plan, the purpose and power behind all these things was sinner. of the lifestyle. So what do you know from a scale of 1 to 10 when it comes to the things of God? We're not asking you to hold up your hand, but to be brutally honest, from a scale of 1 to 10, how would you rate yourself with an understanding of the things of the kingdom of God? And then you take that perspective and you real it out and look around at our world today. What is the understanding of the things of God? You've heard me say this many, many, many times. Everybody wants to be loved. Who doesn't want to be loved? You bet I do. Who wants to be lied to every day? You get up in the morning and say, I hope 10 people before 9 o'clock lie to me. I know one lady who's told me her one family member believes that 90 plus percent of the people she talks to are liars. All the things she hears and understands are lies, and there's only a small little window of truth in her world. Yeah, she believes that. But I believe in my heart that everybody wants to be loved, everybody wants the truth. Here's the problem in the day of 2020. 
truth and love have become relative terms. And we make them up according to our own understanding of what we think they should be. And then you have 30 different groups defining what love is and 30 different groups defining what truth is. And guess what? They're all in the arena. And somebody's not going to come out happy. But the Bible says when we consider the things that are of God, He is truth. And He is love. And there are some things that God's Word says that a lot of people today don't like. There's a lot of things in the Word of God that says this is how people should live. And a lot of people don't like that. The Word of God says this is how a person who's a child of the kingdom and who wants to stand before a holy, righteous God and enter into the kingdom that's been prepared for them should live their lives. And in the world today of relative opinion, it's not received. And the prayer here is that the world would know the things of God. How different does our world become today if the things of God were known and understood and applied in their lives? It's a game changer. That was the concern that Peter had for the church, the apostasy that was coming, that was going to rip it to shreds if they didn't know what? The word of God. That was the defense. That was the answer. Here's what you need to do, church. Know it. That they would know. And you see at the end of verse 2, thy saving health among the nations. You see, the request and the reason for the blessing was simply that God's presence would be known and understood. You see, Jesus, before he went back to heaven, told his followers, told his disciples, there's something that you really need to do while I'm gone. It's in Matthew chapter 28, and we commonly refer to it as what? The Great Commission? And what did he do? He says, go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father. And remember, as you go and do all these things, remembering all the things that I've taught you and showed you, and all the cool things, and all the hardships, and all the difficulties and trials, tell the story! So that the way of God would be known. And then what's he say at the end? And remember, I'm with you everywhere you go. And that's why Jesus said in that great commission at the end, into Jerusalem, Judea, and Samaria, and to the uttermost parts of the earth. God wants us to have the same heart and the same vision for the whole earth. And this is the desire and the prayer of the psalmist. The Bible says that God so loved Pennsylvania. He loved the world. Remember the song, Jesus loves the little children. Help me. All the children of the world Red and yellow, black and white, they are precious in his sight. Jesus loves the little children of the world. The world, friends. And it doesn't matter, red, yellow, black, white, we're all precious in his sight. And as a result of these things, we find that reason now for that blessing. And as a result of that blessing being understood, what happens in verse 3? The people rise now and do what? Bring praise to thee. It's not the common thing in the world that we live today to see Almighty God exalted. To see Jehovah, Jehovah, Yahweh, Elohim exalted and lifted high. The desire of the prayer here was that his mercy and blessing would be understood because of this, that his way would be made known and understood and through it resulting in this global praise and adoration for the things of the kingdom of God. What's heaven all about? The 
depending on who you talk to and what the situation is, a lot of people don't paint the real picture of heaven. The real picture of heaven in many ways is one thing. It centers around what? The praise and adoration and honor of Almighty God. And here the writing simply is for the peoples to praise you. For them to be able to exalt and honor and lift high the name that is above all names. When you go down, friends, and see verses 4 and 5, there's an anticipation now of, of, of the kingdom of God, of the coming kingdom of God. Remember the teaching that we, we looked at for a few weeks in 2 Peter, this, this whole thing that's going to unfold, this kingdom of God. Well, here the psalmist writes about it as well. Let the nations be glad and sing for joy, for you shall judge the people righteously and govern the nations upon the earth. Friends, we're all going to be judged. And the Bible says that every knee under heaven and earth will bow and do what? Confess, Almighty oh God. When's the last time you were on your knees? Maybe physically you just can't do that, but metaphorically you know what I'm talking about in your heart. On your face before God and say, God, in my life, more than ever, I need you. In my family, more than ever, I need you. In our country, more than ever, I need you. More than ever, may your way be known. And may it start with me. And may it start in this church. Because there's coming a day when we're going to have to give an account before Almighty God. And as a result of these things, what are we going to see happens? We're going to see God exalted. We're going to see Him lifted high. And because of these things, what will occur? Look in verse 6. Then the earth shall yield her increase. When the earth knows God's way, God's salvation, God's praise, then she will, in verse 6, yield her increase. The fruit will come forth. The appointed purpose for the earth will be fulfilled. Praise God! And that simple passage in those seven verses outline the whole plan to upright the ship outline the whole purpose by which you and I have been made. It's to bring honor to God and it's to see his blessing, to see the seed bring forth that fruit and everything is laid before his feet to exalt him and lift him high. You see, you and I are called to share this plan sit here today and say oh, I wish you were done it's getting hot in here you can think that because I'm thinking it too but if we fail to take this and share this what have we done God shall bless us in all the ends of the earth. God's heart and God's vision, his vision for the world. I hope you see the opportunity that we have today. Search me, O oh God, and know my heart today. Try me and see if there be anything inside of me that's just not right. Cleanse me from every sin and set me free. My prayer, Father, is for your mercy and for your blessing to be realized and understood not just in me, but in everyone I know, in this community, in this land, around the world. I pray that there be a time when people can say, unto thee, O Lord, do I lift up my soul. Unto thee, O Lord, I give you honor and I give you praise. Unto thee, O oh Lord, I want nothing more than for you to have your way in my life. When you think about our framers, when you think about the passion and the vision that they had for what this experiment of America could be, friends, the whole thing centered around the presence and power and purpose of God to be fulfilled in your life and mine. And out of obedience, we know that it wasn't just going to be here, but it would be a launching to spread this message around the world. Have we been blessed in America? You bet we have.
Have there been problems in America? You bet there have been and still are. But does that mean God has fallen short? No. Does that mean God can't hear that? Does that mean God can't do anything? No. The problem is we can't hear and listen to God. So today, as we think of our country, as we think of this Independence Day, may our prayer simply be, God, bless us. God, show us mercy. But God, show me as a citizen, show me as a Christian, show me as a believer how I can share this message with as many people as possible for them to know the simple truth that will set them free. Help me to share this message that one day you're going to come back and you're going to set up this kingdom and this rule and, 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 and may I have done my best to provide people I love the most the truth for life. Our founders, our framers were willing to lay it all on the line as they signed that Declaration of Independence. Their fame, their fortune, anything that it would take because of what they believe. How about you? How about me? We're going to sing a song in a minute simply, and it says this, the greatest thing in all my life is knowing you and serving you and loving you. And I pray that because of that, that can be the springboard for you to take this message of blessing, hope, and mercy to your family, to your friends, and to the world. Thank God for the United States of America. The boy, whenever we need his blessing, we need his mercy. But may through this opportunity we cause many, many, many people to know what it means to be free. To be free. Not just as a citizen in the United States, but free from the bondage of sin. The Bible says the wages of sin, they are death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Help me today to know and understand that I can share this for your glory as we pray in Christ's name. Amen. Father, we love you. And we're asking simply today to search our hearts. First of all, we're asking that we know you. If we don't know you, may today be the day we say, Jesus, come into my heart. May today be the moment that I put aside all those things that I once thought were true but now yield to the power of the Spirit of God to have control of my life. Forgive my sin. I want your way. I want your plan and purpose. And I want to tell as many people, tell as many people as I can about you. We pray this, Lord, for our church. We pray this for our community. We pray this for our nation. We pray this, Lord, for the people around the world that they would know and understand the way of the kingdom. And may it start with me as I pray in Christ's mighty and holy name. Amen. Thank you for joining us. We hope you were blessed by this message. For more information, go to SwissHelmParkPMChurch.com.